you, you gain uh, quite a bit. And some of the things that much page speed can do for you is, for example, realize when you're serving a JavaScript file for, like jQuery that is a standard across many other sites, and then it's going to replace that with the canonical URL. So if you don't load that from Google, chances are that um, it has actually been cached by uh, somebody already. So you don't, um, uh, you, you don't need to even serve it. It's just, it's just gonna go, uh, it's gonna, um, it's gonna have really have a really heavy cache in your, in your browser. It's also gonna allow you to automatically combine different CSS files. Uh, if, if in your project, if, if you have five or six um, uh, CSS files, the browser is going to have to open five or six connections to, to get them. Um, Mod PageSP detects that, uh, combines them into a single file, and then returns, returns it. It can do the same thing with uh, the sprite images. If it uh, detects that your browser supports it, it can combine images into a big one, and then you only refer to the, to the offset in the image, and it, it, can, it can load uh, quite fast. If it detects that it's an uh, older browser that doesn't have support for that, then it's just going to serve the images uh, directly. It's going to also like optimize those image. Uh, um, it's going to use different uh, formats, or if, if you're using JPEG, it's it, it kind of going to convert them into progressive uh, JPEGs. Um, can make uh, uh, things that are not essential a lot asynchronously, uh, like the, if you're embedding uh, Google Analytics and it detects that you're doing it um, uh, in a way that is blocking, it's going to make it asynchronous. Um, it's going to realize when some images can be loaded later on and, and uh, it's, it's going to configure them so they're only loaded when you scroll the page. Um, it can prefetch DNS, uh, meaning that if, if you have, um, you're using different domain names in, in, the, in the content of the page, it's going to uh, include like link, uh, uh, links at the, at the beginning of the header, um, and it's going to help the browser uh, already start resolving those domain names before the page has finished uh, loading. And, and finally, it's, it's able to, um, Compress or minify JavaScript. Um, that can be tricky because sometimes it breaks. It shouldn't break, but sometimes it, it breaks. So it, you can configure each one of these settings for your particular application. And it's going to detect when it's better to a file that, of JavaScript that is uh, as an external asset. Uh, it, it's maybe too small. It's going to cost more to open the connection and get it than just make it part of the, of the main HTML page. And it's going to do it that way. And the opposite. If you have a big chunk of CSS or JavaScript, that could be a lot that in parallel is going to take that automatically of the, of the HTML page. So if, if you don't have any, any questions so far, um, I, I'm going to go into, into describing um, how I, I, I configure like a regular um, WordPress install. Um, I take the latest version of WordPress, uh, slightly older Apache, um, a newer version of MySQL and PHP, and, and, and run tests on a, on a micro. So if you have um, a, a mod PHP uh, configuration with prefork and, and the regular um, uh, configuration or the default configuration which you allow access to, to HT access, the time to launch the page is gonna take three seconds. Um, it's gonna involve 19 requests and, and take um, 431 uh, kilobytes that are gonna be served, half a meg being served. Um, we preloaded uh, WordPress here with the with, uh, default theme, and um, then we actually created posts and images. Um, we probably should uh, just, uh, at some point, we will upload the zip file so you can reproduce uh, these results as well. And, um, and we just um, uh, used the web page test um, service to, um, um, to take a look at how long it will take to, to uh, how to optimize it. So if you actually use compression and you um, instruct Apache not to look into the, into the file system to, um, for compression options, you can nearly um, uh, halve that time to 1.7 seconds. The number of requests stays the same, but the number of, of bytes that you're serving also gets significantly reduced to 326 kilobyte. Um, if you, on top of that you include uh, mod page speed, the, you can even further uh, reduce the request that you're, that you're using, the time that it takes, and, and the bytes that you, that you um, generate. Um, you can even reduce further the time if you use like a, a bytecode caching mechanism like, like APC. Um, 
However, um, and, and this is not reflected in the table, if you use uh, a pre fork NPM, you can reduce, uh, you can make very fast the time that it tends to, to answer one request from, from one uh, uh, browser. But if you actually run the test in which you have like, multiple simultaneous users, like eight or nine, then the server is slow to, to a crawl because you, um, if you're not limiting the, the number of, of uh, processes, uh, then it's gonna happen what I, what I mentioned. Um, it's, it's gonna, mod PHSP is gonna start using CPU, you're gonna start uh, um, spawning more processes, they're gonna hit the, the, uh, the file system, um, the swap, and, and the swap is gonna uh, mean that the operating system is, is making a lot of calls to the file system, and it's gonna slow down. So even if the um, individual call is gonna be very fast, when you have multiple ones, it, it's just, it's not, it's not gonna work for a machine with such limited resources. So the thing that we do is we, we install PHP FPM. So we use the event, um, uh, MP, uh, sorry, we use PHP FPM process, we use the event NPM, and now we have Apache serving um, the static contents with threads. So it's able to, to serve many more uh, requests uh, simultaneously for each browser that just asks for the page while passing the, the PHP request just to an external process that is running. So in this case, the, the, the time that it takes to service a, a request is actually goes a little bit higher, but it's able to serve many more simultaneous uh, requests. Um, then if it's, I mentioned before how using page speed uh, can um, for micros can make you hit that threshold in which the the, the CPU is going to be throttled. You can get a lot of the um, um, benefits of, of 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 caching or in terms of speed if you use something like varnish or super cache there. So even if you increase the the, the size of bytes on the number of requests that you do, still it's going to be uh, significantly faster than than not using those. So. Um, that's another option that you can use if you want to speed up your, your WordPress setup. And then finally, um, you get significant amount of um, uh, decrease in, in, um, uh, in, in time if you use a content distribution network. The bytes there are the bytes total that are downloaded to the browser, but um, two thirds of that are not being served by, by Apache, are being served by the CloudFront in, in Ortez, so your server is actually faster, is, is actually able to um, earlier to answer the new request. So even if the, the amount of uh, bytes that you're serving is the same, uh, your server only serves a third of those. And is, there are a lot of plugins that allow you to automatically do that for WordPress. So the configuration involved is, is, not, is not very big. And then if you compare the, the micros versus in different providers, um, it's the, the performance is, is pretty much um, the same. Um, I, I just got here like best case for each one of the, the best uh, configuration for each one of them. And if you get like an AWS small, um, you can significantly uh, reduce the, the, the time for each one of the individual applications. But also you can, um, um, it, it, you can um, service more requests simultaneously as well. Um, so it, it does not, one of the other advantages of, of using these machines in, 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 in a cloud is it makes it really easy for you to um, grow. Simply by rebooting the machine, you're going to have like 30 seconds to a minute of downtime. But um, if you're just starting with, you have a personal website or it's just a staging server, uh, you can afford that. And then, you know, a minute later you can, without having to change or reproduce the configuration, you can, um, um, uh, just uh, start with a new, uh, with a bigger instance. Um, there are other things that you can do with with um, with a micro. Um, uh, our, our library has um, an, uh, a lot of uh, uh, applications that that can work fine in servers with uh, small um, uh, memory footprints. You you can run WordPress. You can use CMS like Drupal and Joomla. A lot of people use uh, uh, VPNs. We don't offer VPNs, but the same way that you have Vietnam, you have a bunch of other like free AMIs and images that provide these services. You can use this as a proxy server. So if I'm in Spain and I want to watch Netflix, you can start like a, a, a proxy server on on, uh, on Amazon Micro and you can actually watch Netflix that way, even if you're not physically uh, there. 
You can use your, your own Git repository. Um, there are things like Redmine and GitLab that make it really, really easy. Um, you can run wikis, you can run forums. Uh, we have a lot of people also that don't put it there by photo galleries, like people that don't wanna, kinda wanna have their own Flickr. Only friends are gonna be um, seeing that. They password protect it. But it's, it's a way of having your, your own, you know, control of your own, of your own data um, and book tracking. The, the other cool thing that you can do with the micros is not just the price, is the thing that that end-to-end -end automation allows you. I mentioned backups. So because that EBS uh, or those file systems are a network base, you can take um, very easily a snapshot in a manner that is automated and it's also incremental um, at any point that you want. So you, uh, uh, you know, for, for one of these uh, smaller uh, machines that you don't change a lot of the, of the content, probably for a dollar a month, you can have pr a process that you know, it, it keeps the last 48 hours of, of your server with the snapshots every hour. So if you accidentally drop the database or, or, you, or, or you have somebody breaks into your server, you, you can go like in, in, um, in Mac OS 10 and, and go in the time machine, you know, go back to, to the hour before that happened and you can recover the, the server without having to do anything or without having to have any kind of agent uh, installed in the Installed in the um, in the in the system. It also allows you to resize the disk as, as as you want. You can start with 10 gigabytes, which is free with most uh, uh, cloud providers, and then you can expand that up to one terabyte if if you need to. And again, it's only going to take you like 30 seconds to reboot or, or to change to change that. Um, and that's um, nearly out of time now, but uh, we have some time for for questions. So if you have um, do you have any questions? Um, I'm going kind to of blot it. We haven't blot it yet, but I, I will do it uh, this afternoon. Uh, you talked about running it. Uh, if you have a question, like, for instance, between like, that, would you even require a swap for that? Will, will, will I even? Uh, will you even run with swap? Yes, because it, you. You want to run it even if it's slow because it, otherwise the operating system is going to start killing processes. And sometimes if you are running, like you still need to run like cron to, to like um, um, rotate the logs. So sometimes you, you can, you don't want to run it all the time. We have, uh, uh, like we built a lot of images for a lot of clouds. So at some times we actually do need that scalability. So at some times we launch like 500 images at the same time to build all these applications. Like we are doing it right now, like we were hit as well. Um, uh, by the, the herd bleed back, so we need to rebuild all of our, of our images. And, and we can do that very easily because at least that part is very fast because we can launch like 500 machines at the same time. And one thing that we found is we were using micros because we thought it was gonna be cheaper and if it takes longer, but what happened, a lot of the process that is stolen hit the swap. So we under, actually ended up paying more money for IO <laughs> And when we realize, then it, it will have taken to just pay for a, for a small instance. And for things like um, build system like we do, you can even pay for spot instances that are um, have like much cheaper price and sometimes an order of magnitude, but they are not guaranteed that they're gonna, if somebody bids more for that instance, they're gonna kill it. But if it's something temporary that you're, you're doing analysis or just doing like a build system, it, it, will, it will work. But it, in our case, for this kind of servers that need to be um, persistent in time is, is worth to, to have the to have the swap. Um, if you have bigger instances, the Amazon Micros you cannot have like local disks, um, but in, in bigger instances um, uh, you can have like local disks that are ephemeral, so you can use those. You can put a, a swap there. Um, well, a, a lot of things I didn't cover here that are in, you know even more relevant for for. Um, uh, uh, if, if you have, for example, SSL, like, and, and, and Sander is going to be giving uh, a, a talk later on, um, uh, are, you know, how to optimize for SSL. There is a bunch of things that you need to do. We, have, we are, uh, uh, ironically, before this book hit us, we, we, were, we were moving, actually, all of our servers to, to open SSL, sorry, to um, mod SSL. Um, and there are a lot of things that you need to do to optimize there for to minimize the, the connection time and to minimize the, the number of round trips. So it's a whole different world. You, there are protocols like SPDY that um, um, if the browser supports it, makes things much, 
much, much faster. So there's a lot of topics that I haven't covered. I was just trying just to concentrate on things that you can do with, with PHP and, and Apache. And um, like I mentioned, these are incredibly popular. Um, um, we run just, just on, 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 uh, on Amazon. Uh, these free images, we run over 100 million hours of usage, and a lot of those are, are micros. So we actually have more micros, more servers running um, uh, multiple times than Heroku does, and a lot of people don't, don't know that. And a lot of those, I mean, Heroku servers are probably bigger, but in terms of just like uh, individual instances, we, we run multiple times than, than they do. And this is a, a bunch of people just starting with, with the small images. Okay, so if, if you don't have any questions and, and, and don't, you can, you can get me if you have any, any other questions. Thank you.